A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. After three long years, it finally happened. I caught the Rona for the first time. Hence, no videos in the past two weeks. But I am back and as you might notice, I'm already in the Christmas mood. I know, it's a bit early, but um, if you want to have one of those for Christmas, I got a bunch of variants, links down in the description. They are available at my spring shop once again. Because starting uh, almost next week, the advent calendar is finally back. Last year, it wasn't. This year, it's going to happen once again. So stay tuned for it. It's going to be exciting. And now, this differential equation right here. What? to the y prime is equal to some arbitrary constant. I just wrote any constant here. It really doesn't have, <laughs> have any further meaning to it. That's the differential equation we are going to take a look at today. And it's, it's, it's kind of it's, it's kind of funky, I suppose. We got a derivative up there in the exponent. So give it a shot and see if you can figure it out for yourself. And now we are going to dive right in. So the first logical step to solve this thing right here is to take the logarithm on both sides at first, the natural log, because we have this thing up here and we want to get it down. That's ugly. No, 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 we don't want that. So the first thing to do is take the natural log on both sides, leaving us with the natural log of what to the what pram, but by the logarithm properties we can drag the exponent to the front, making it multiplicative. So y prime times the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of 69 which is yet another constant. So if you start with any constant here, you're going to end up with the logarithm of any constant here. I'm going to call this C for now to shorten things up a tiny little bit. Okay, how can you proceed now? So we want to solve this differential equation and the best way to do so is by using integration because that's the counterpart of doing derivatives. So we are going to integrate both sides with respect to x for now. And what we're going to end up with is the integral of the logarithm of y times, and this thing right here is nothing other than dy dx integrated with respect to x is equal to the integral of c dx. Now this right here is very easy to solve. Obviously this is just our constant times x plus some arbitrary constant Ah, oh, so, so many letters, um, kappa. <laughs> but what about the left-hand side? A layman's argument here is that the dx's are gonna cancel out because if it's written in LaTeX, then it's obviously true. But it's written on a blackboard. But this still makes it true because stuff written on a blackboard is just absolutely amazing. Take a look at my differential equation playlist to see why this indeed holds, kind of, okay. Um, so the only thing we need to do is to integrate the logarithm of, of y with respect to y. Now here we can just make use of integration by parts. The i method very easy differentiate the log of y, giving us 1 over y and integrate 1 because log of y is just 1 times log of y um, and you're going to end up with y. So meaning what we're going to get is that c times x plus some arbitrary constant kappa out of the real or complex numbers is equal to log of y times y minus the integral of 1 over y times y, which is the integral of 1, which is just going to end us up with y, because we are integrating with respect to y. So minus y plus some arbitrary constant um, capital xi that no one uses ever because it's ugly and hard to write. But you can just subtract this constant on both sides, absorbing it in the kappa, giving you another constant. So this right here can go fuck itself and die somewhere in Mexico. And now you could call it quits here, but this is looking ugly as fuck. Because <laughs> in normal case, if you want a solution to a differential equation, you want a function with respect to x being equal to something on the other side. So this right here, in my opinion, is not a sufficient solution. So we are gonna go a bit further on this one. And the first thing to do is we are gonna bring all of those together a tiny little bit because this right here annoys me a lot. That's the multiplication of something with y minus just another factor of y. This is ugly. 
So we can um, use the exponent rule for logarithms to turn this into the natural log of y to the y. And if we ha would have another logarithm here, we could actually track it together using the logarithm rule for subtracting logarithms. Now, how can we write y with, with respect to logarithm in, in some kind of way? Well, this thing right here is the same as the logarithm of e to the y. I think everyone should be familiar with this. Um, little transformation and that's very easy to see now. Oh, we can bring those together, giving us um, just the, the quotient of those two. So by bringing those together, we are going to end up with c times x plus the arbitrary constant kappa is equal to the logarithm of y to the y divided by e to the y. And well, one nice thing that we can do here too is we can um, use the exponent rules and just get the to the wife power, <laughs> to, to the waifu power, to the outside. Okay, I mean, this looks a tiny little bit better. So we have brought everything together. It's not this ugly fucking mess that we got here, but still we have two wives in here, which is not going to give us a nice solution yet. So we need to put a bit more work in. And the first thing is to get rid of the logarithm because this is just like the start. This is really ugly. This real doesn't bring us anything. It's not any good. So we are going to exponentiate both sides and we are going to end up with, so logarithm goes away here, y divided by e to the y through power is equal to um, e to the c times x plus arbitrary constant kappa. Okay, that is a bit better, but we still have y to the y here in some kind of way. So let us get rid of the y power that we got here. So we can take the y root on both sides. This is something we can do or ex uh, exponentiate both sides by one over y, giving us in the process that y divided by e is equal to e to the c times x plus kappa divided by y. Okay, but this is still not nice yet because now we have a y here and a y in the exponent here. So we need to kind of separate those. And there are certain functions in mathematics that are well researched and um, physicists, chemists, etc., need to make use of to get kind of a nice antiderivative, for example, or the like. And what we need to use here is the Lambert W function. I've introduced it various times here on this channel. Let me just give you a small reminder on what it is. So if we have a function x times e to the x and we call it f of x, then the Lambert W function is the inverse function of that thing. And if you apply the inverse function to a function, you are going to end up with the argument in and of itself. So if you apply the Lambert W function to the function f of x, inverse function of function, it's going to result in just the argument x in and of itself. And on the other side, we are applying the inverse function too. So Lambert W of x times e to the x. And this thing right here is something that we are striving for. And as mentioned before, it's a well-researched function. We know how to approximate it. You can use the Taylor series expansion on the approximate branch of the Lambert W function. I have made videos on the Taylor series expansion for that. So if we get a solution out using the Lambert W function, we can approximate its numerical value using, for example, the Taylor series of that. So yeah, we are gonna make use of that. But for now, what we need before we can make use of the Lambert W function is we need something of the form x times e to the x. So the thing in front of the e and the exponent of the e must be the same. So we need to transform this in some kind of way. And the first step to do so is to just compare what we got. So we got c times x plus kappa divided by y up here. And what we wanna get is we wanna have this thing right here at the front too. So we need to be a bit clever. And the first thing you might notice is if we divide both sides by y, we are gonna get the one over y thing that we have up here in the exponent. So why not do that? Giving us one over e is equal to one over y times e to the cx plus kappa divided by y. And the only thing that is missing now is the c times x plus kappa up here, how can we get it? Well, obviously by multiplying both sides by it under certain conditions, namely that x is not equal to um, 
uh, negative kappa divided by C. This is not something that we want. Okay, if this holds, then we can multiply both sides by it, giving us C times X plus kappa divided by E is equal to C times X plus kappa divided by Y times E to the C times X plus kappa divided by Y. And the cool thing is now we got something in the form of x times e to the x. And now we can apply the Lambert w function on both sides. And then we can proceed further by applying the Taylor series to the, appro uh, to the appropriate branch and the like. But this is not of concern here. We just want to get a solution to the differential equation and the other stuff can be left to the numerical analysis out there, aka the people that um, do physics. <laughs> So, applying the Lambert W function on the right-hand side gives us the x value that we have here, which is nothing other than c times x plus kappa divided by y. is equal to the Lambert W function of this thing. We don't know what this is in terms of the Lambert W function, but we are going to apply it on both sides. So, Lambert W of c times x plus kappa divided by e. And now we can solve for y, multiplying both sides by y of x and dividing both sides by this holy mess. We are going to get that y with respect to x. The solution to our differential equation is equal to, don't forget, c was log of 69. So we are going to write this holy number out times x plus kappa divided by the Lambert w function of log of 69 times x plus kappa divided by an e popping up, where kappa is element of the complex numbers, probably, I suppose. And this right here is our seriously ugly solution to this differential equation. And let me know down there in the comments below if you have gotten the right answer. But I think it kind of is beautiful, I suppose, because there is an e popping up here. But that's the only real thing that is nice about the solution. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you want to see more about Lambert W function or analysis, how to solve the French equations in a very cool way, then the content of today's sponsor Brand might be the perfect fit for you. The stuff with the Lambert W function is very abstract. And I think there is not a nice way to visualize how this set of solutions to this differential equation looks like. But actually, if you take a look at fundamental differential equations like y prime is equal to c, for example, it's always great to take a look at the graph and see what the antiderivative of this whole thing, for example, looks like graphically. And this is where Brilliant comes in, one of your best sources online to learn new things on a daily basis in a very visual and playful manner. With the nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer sciences, chemistry, no matter what you think of right now in the STEM field, they got something up their sleeve for you. And as mentioned before, they do it in a very sneaky but very cool way, transferring the knowledge over to the user by letting you play around with graphics, for example, the graph of a parabola, vary the parameters and see what it looks like. It's actually very hard to describe how successful this method of learning can be to your own studies. And I for myself was not a believer in visual methods. Um, I'm not the learning type to take a look at visuals and see, well, that is actually nice and makes me understand the topic more because in normal case, I was the abstract kind of guy. But when I went over the courses on print or my live streams or just for myself, it actually made so much more sense in so many branches of mathematics to take a look at the things graphically, especially in group theory, instead of taking a look at the isomorphism theorem for groups. <laughs> it's an abstract matter. Seriously, just try it out for yourself. Just talking about it won't do any justice to what Brilliant delivers to the users and just try it out for yourself by using my link down there at the top of the description brilliant.org slash flamblemass. With it you are going to get a 30 day free trial of amazing awesomeness. You can try the whole landscape for completely free of Brilliant by checking out my link down there at the top of the description. And if you think this could turn into a long term relationship between you and Brilliant, then definitely make sure to make complete use of the link. 
and get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is an amazing deal, considering how much content they already have available on their website and how much content they are adding on a regular basis. And Christmas is around the corner, so maybe they come up with a bunch of cool stuff during the Christmas season too. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And this concludes today's video and I hope you um, got a blast out of it or kick or whatever. Um, yeah, that basically concludes the video. Don't forget to also check out my NPC channel, NP Cooking, and I'm hopefully gonna see you soon on the advent calendar. Have a good one. Ciao.